Okay, thank you. Okay. How is it? I was, oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Hold Wait, on. which way to, is this swoop I going? I need to look a little more slutty and a little less monetary. catering. What if I just do the whole episode with, is this going to get us demonetized? I don't care at this point. Is it too? Because the microphone's really keeping it classy. I don't, as long as your bra's covering your boobs, I think we're fine. The amount of acne I have on my chest right now is unreal. <sighs> Hello, you guys, and welcome back to another episode of The Sip. I'm Ryland Adams, of course, joined by... Elizabeth Home Okay. Hello, hello, everybody. Um, Daddy's mad. Daddy's mad. <laughs> Daddy's mad. You know, and Daddy's I, got sweaty ass. I, had, I don't have sweaty ass. Well, not yet, but soon you will. Lizzie and I went on a day date the other day. Thank you very much for uh, carving time out of your busy schedule to see me. You're welcome. Um, we'll get to putting our uh, armor down for Elizabeth. We okay. can all relax. She showed Every, up for me you, this week. Week. saying it was abusive for me to hang out with other friends can you chill the fuck out no there's two camps in the comment section people were also i'm a new mom and it's more of the fomo of the not the even the fomo just the 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 the, the, so, the stress that you want i think what irritated me about the comment section that was on the side on your side uh -huh. was they got the details wrong first of all well it was heavily skewed the story to benefit me because you're a liar because i and a gas delivered it yeah i'm not r2 okay um anyway i thought we were okay okay oh right right say we're putting our guard down no, 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 no. say guard your down. piece what, no, I just, what bothered I just, you i think it's nuts for people in the comment section to think that it's okay that other people dim their light so that no one feels bad you i think to that's why well that's what the vibe of the comment section was it was like lizzie having other friends while your friend has a baby is nasty and it's like is it because that's a little crazy and if you're living your life like that i think you need to chill no it's <laughs> just let no, us be unreasonable for one second no these are other you be unreasonable this has nothing to do with you this no, no, has no. to do with them this I'm, is a them problem. no but they're in the same but a lot of them are also new moms yeah. who are taking that side and it's like let us all just act a little crazy right now it doesn't make sense i know sure but we're just all like in this newborn craze yeah and we just want to be crazy and be validated in our crazy yeah be crazy go <laughs> thank off you. Be thank, crazy, you, thank go you thank you thank you thank you thank you i didn't yes. think of it like that but also like if you want to feel better like maybe don't lean so hard into the crazy <laughs> it worked you showed up this week I would have showed up anyways if I was feeling up to it. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. And I gave her so many outs because I know that you had a busy day ahead when you came to help me yeah. take care of babies and you still came over. And I kept saying, I'm a lot more mentally stable this week. So and if you, you know need what? to cancel, you can. And next time I have COVID, I'm still coming over. What? No. Yep. Well, that was the other vibe of the comment section. Well, why wasn't she there? Because I had COVID, motherfuckers. Well, and you <laughs> took an elective 20-day trip to New York City. Yeah, God forbid I see my dad every two years. Okay, so I tried to have comment a section. calm and relaxing morning today i was like and you know with this podcast i've tried to just chill out a little bit not overproduce too much i'm like you know whatever will be will be and if you guys are with us up until this point i think everyone's consensus that i have seen is ryland re fucking lax you yeah. know so i'm trying to relax and i'm trying to just go with the flow so here i am having a nice peaceful morning because it's a filming day so we have somebody here taking care of the babies i still wake up early because that's kind of just my schedule now that i have children and i'm walking the dogs i'm taking a deep breath we have all of these appointments lined up yeah. for max and jet this week and then and a dark right, cloud crossed over right the sun. before uh lizzie pulls up uh shane wakes up to a voicemail that they had moved our appointment two hours earlier and i uh, I was just like, they and have she an goes, appointment I've just, for i've just gone ahead and moved the appointment up for you and i said no, I've planned my whole day and week around this yeah. appointment so that I can finish the podcast, have childcare, make sure I can get there with one baby while the other baby's being taken care of because who wants to take two babies to an hour and a half doctor appointment? When only one has to go. Right. It is absurd to me that this woman called and said, I changed your appointment for you. And so no I, questions. I call back and I go, hey, I scheduled my work day around this. I literally can't be there at the time you want. And she goes, well, we have a stacked day, appointments back to back, and there's nothing we can do. And I said, well, what about all the other appointments? They can't move. It's just I'm the one appointment that has to yeah. move. She goes, well, yours is a newborn one, so it's longer. And I said, so again, why we... am I the problem? And also like... <laughs> Ask me. Call me and ask me because I might not be able to do that. Yeah. You don't get to just say, I'm changing your appointment. And at the end of the day, this isn't the biggest deal in the world. But now I was, I had 
I do have things planned for this podcast, and I don't want to rush this either just because somebody did a wrong sketch. Everyone makes I'm mistakes. I'm irate for you. By the way, where was this energy for me when I was dying of an illness? What do you mean? <laughs> you're giving it to some stranger bitch at a medical hospital who's actually a night, and I'm sick and dying at home, and you're like, this bitch ride for her. Like, what? Well, and it is crazy because they have sent me 400 confirmation emails, text messages, phone calls, and I brought that up on the phone with her. I said, hey, this didn't come up in the 80 times that I had to confirm this appointment and then fill out 20 minutes of paperwork yeah and now all that seems a little passive aggressive right like they were waiting for you to say no I can't make it you yeah. know what I mean like the reason they kept pressing that are you gonna make it is like to give you an out or so that they couldn't like have to own up for they were just up. gonna have me pack up a newborn's life and get all the way to their office to say oh we don't have the time to take you today who are these people <laughs> who are these people <laughs> done with them done do you want to take me to the appointment do you want to come yeah maxi it's max's appointment and he was having a really good day yesterday we took him on a tour of the house after like a feeding when it was playtime mm -hmm. and he was loving it we just he loves the lights he loves looking around i took him up into the theater room we turned on baby shark and he was just he looked like he was sitting straight up like a little man. It's so hard it for me not cute. to just post them all day long, which I know like they're in some of the vlogs. You can see them a little bit, but I don't know if I just want to be the girl that's posting. It's kind of like when you send me pictures of your, but I'm sending them to you. Yeah. I'm just not posting them on Instagram. I love the pictures. Thank you. I love all of them. I send them <laughs> to some of my friends too. So it's like you're posting. And so which one of your friends is the biggest fan of my kids? Um, Probably Haley. And which kid do they like most? Um, I think she likes them equally. I know this is going to get me a lot of hate in the comments, but we've also renamed your children. <laughs> oh, we have not renamed my children. We have. <laughs> not renamed my children. Haley's the one who came up with Carlo for Jet. And I that one is, Jet does not look like a Carlo. Honestly, it's harder for me to get behind, but sometimes I look at it and I'm like, I see it. Why is Haley renaming my baby? <laughs> we can't help a it. A woman in Arizona who I like very much. <laughs> but, but I've never met. Has never met my children <laughs> is renaming them. Well, I, I started it, to be fair. <laughs> you did. And she named, she renamed Max Sal. It's just because I feel like that's his soul name. And Sal isn't when I look, bad. No, it's not. And when I look at him, I'm like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Sal? Do you want to be a Max? Do you want to be the Sal? Hmm. And it's short for Salvatore. Tor? I think Not so. Not Dor? Salvatore. I think. I don't, think I don't I've know. I've never heard that name We can before. ask him when he can articulate his feelings. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, but we'll also call him Max because that's his name and I'm respectful of the choices made by his fathers. <laughs> Lizzie did come over and she spent Sunday morning with me and my family. Um, it's a little bit stressful at times, huh? I mean... The cuteness rage stresses me out, but I'm I get to leave this and you have to stay in it, so it's not the same for me. Do you know what I mean? Well, being a parent is wild because one second you're pulling your hair out and you just think, why, why, why? <laughs> uh, what if he just looks at the camera and says, "Why?" For the next forty-five minutes, like, no, but like, why? <laughs> not why did I have children, but, but why, why are you acting like this? I've tried to tend to you so much. It's just like, why? <laughs> why? And then the other, and then I walk in this morning and they just are both so happy and calm Cute. and excited. And I'm just ah, so cute. I was the way that they make me, it's like, they're like the way that I feel about my dogs, which is very intensely. Like mm -hmm. I've chipped my teeth over bubs before. <laughs> I feel that way about your little babies. Like it makes my, it makes all my little, and this is probably a terrifying thing for you to know, but it makes me like all my muscles flex in my hands and my jaw gets tight and I just want to scream because I love them and they're so cute. They are so cute. Do you have that feeling? Cute. Yeah, of course, yeah. all the time. I just want to cuddle them and hug them and love them. Um, I find, oh, there was a couple of things I wanted to hit on. One is the schedules of babies. I posted my vlog, Day in a Life of Newborn Twins, mm -hmm. and a lot of people are either gung-ho on the schedule or they're so adamant against the schedule saying that's uh, anti the baby baby's natural clock and feed and it just goes against everything that you would think and then other people are just so for and go for the schedule yeah. and i just think it's funny how passionate both sides are about having a schedule or not having a schedule and for us with two kids if we ever want to sleep through the night you and if we don't want to be waking up every two and a half hours for four years there has to be a schedule and the schedule is in place 
to be realistic to what they're capable of and follow their natural hunger cues. Yeah, you're not telling these motherfuckers they have to go to sleep at a certain time, like, based around you. It's a natural cue that you're getting from the baby. And it's around the the sunrise, the yeah. sunset, uh, how often babies are hungry. And if they are hungry, if they're very hungry, I'm going to feed them. I'm yeah. not going to not feed them. This is if they wake up 10 minutes early, I'm going to try to stretch them to meet the thing. And it's we're getting them gently as close to a schedule that sh- shifts and alters as they grow to get them to sleep 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. And it's not we're not doing anything out of the the like norm no. of what they're capable or want to do like babies do want to sleep and eat that's and all that's that what they, they do. do yeah um but it is i saw a lot of people just saying that's such a first time parent thing and i thought well we'll see maybe maybe it won't work <laughs> yeah but proven time and time again we have somebody helping us who's been doing this for 25 years and she's the one that's helping us set the schedule yeah. that's appropriate for their age and she said also, like if these babies set their own schedule, they sometimes don't know what's because be- they get overtired mm-hmm. and then it produces cortisone, which is also a stress hormone or chemical that keeps them awake when they're overtired. And then and, they can't sleep and they're a mess. And they can't sleep and they're a mess. And overtired babies actually, it's, I mean, it's very involved I and mean, well thought out on I, both sides. But I've seen a lot of my friends go through different choices in the early phases and i think you know it always comes down to it's your child it's your business right it's not like we're talking about dog food and feeding them kibble versus real food like obviously you feed your dog real food you know what i'm saying the formula is a whole thing too though like we switched them from this super i don't know the ones that they do in the hospital which and then we switched them to a pre-digestive one that has all these i mean all these it's chemicals. hard to land on a formula because each baby's like tummy situation is unique. Well, and we're in the we're like right about to hit two months this week when this podcast goes live. But right at that six to eight weeks is typically a huge growth spurt for babies. Right. Um, they weren't jiving with the previous formula. So we switched their formula. It was their six to eight week growth spurt. Like a lot of just different factors were happening with them. So it was a more fussy two weeks. But then the last two days, they've just been these... Little angel boys. Little angel boys. Little tiny angel boys. Cherubs, if you will. It's a very wild ride. I think that... So something I saw that was truly beautiful is um, when your children are born, it's not the only birth in the room. Like, it's also the birth of a parent. Right. Like, your... And another thing that gave me a lot of empathy for my parents is just knowing that this is their first time doing everything for the rest of my life also. So just having grace for yourself in that, too. Like, you know, you've got patience for the boys figuring out life for the first two months like you're figuring out life as a parent now for the rest of your life yeah and, and you're just, doing a good job because you, you're doing a good job it makes you a value because in the in the tense moments where you're frustrated or you really do have to just take a deep breath and be like yeah. reset yeah. reevaluate and then you're you're kind of you're forced to assess your own personality traits and address them to be able to be the best caretaker for your kid. Yeah. And then you add in, I mean, even you were talking about with your, in every work scenario or daycare scenario, eventually you got to go back to work. So then there's the guilt of, am I not there enough? Am I there too much? Am I not? Hey moms. You're doing good. You're all doing good. (laughs) I'm so proud of all of you. And it's I think so that's hard what... and scary. A whole life is on your fucking shoulders. And I think last week when I was m- melting down towards you, it was more just the bubble up of all of it where it's like, Elizabeth, just get over here. But we're going to bring this energy for that bitch at the hospital now, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now we're angry <laughs> at her and she messed this up. She fucked up and we're all going to the appointment today because we've got some shit to say to her mm-hmm. and we're going to be late. Mm-hmm. We're going to come late because <laughs> we come when we were expected, not when we were told to after the fact and we confirmed 80 times you nasty whore and i've already paid for this appointment they <laughs> they wanted my credit card upon confirmation what are they the vet exactly yuck it is wild how much you have to also prepare i've never scheduled so many appointments or d- uh, done executed on things for myself the way i do yeah. for the kids it's not you really you're like well i'm bringing the baby home it's like psych bitch bring him back tomorrow <laughs> like what literally and yeah. then they're like and then they test you when you get there like well can you feed it it's like you let me go home without knowing i could feed it have i said on the podcast our first 
I told, oh, I definitely told you because I was so enraged. Sorry. If uh, I'm so curious what percentage of the audience is moms and care versus we Ryan, got, please stop. We've got a lot of moms. Okay. Also, well, this is your life. Express you. yourself, girl. <laughs> we were going to talk about my fucking vision board. And we're still and getting to that. I forgot the vision board. I know. Uh, I know. <laughs> uh, so the first pediatrician that we went to for the boys we get home from seattle we scheduled it which is also a nightmare because as a first time mom you don't realize you can't insure the baby until the baby's here and then once the baby's here you still have to find the doctor but you can't book the appointment until after so it's a whole nightmare and you're just kind of guessing some people do some pediatricians will meet do a meet and greet with you so you mm -hmm. can make sure the vibes right but we took them just to the closest one that's in network with our insurance and we went there and the vibe was just so horrible. And then after everything, she goes, are the boys hungry? And I said, no, we planned this appointment around their schedule. Like we're only 10 minutes away. They just ate. And then right when we get home, they're going to eat again. And she just kept pushing feeding and she kept asking her, I don't know if it's her assistant or whatever. Do you have the formula they have? Cause I didn't bring, there was a bottle in the car, but not two. I was expecting one might have a meltdown and need a bottle. And then she finally really forces us to feed them. And then three minutes into it, she goes, okay, I just wanted to make sure you guys could feed them. Also, bitch, just say that. Let me know when I'm coming into this appointment, you want to make sure I can feed my baby, so bring two bottles. Don't do some weird passive-aggressive shit that makes me feel like I'm an incompetent asshole. I could slap you in the face. So then, I have a newborn child. I, called I got stuck in a fucking hotel because Joe Biden decided to come into town when I was trying to get home with my newborns, and now you're giving me this? I could, oh, I'm on, uh, this has been a rough day for me too. I don't know why. I just woke up today and chose rage. And so, Cuteness <laughs> rage, violence rage. I canceled uh, the follow-up appointment because with newborns, you go to the hospital a lot the first yeah. month or you go to the pediatrician a lot in the first month. And I canceled it. Nobody even ever followed up to ask, oh, why did you cancel? Yeah. What happened? I wish they had. That lady was just, see you later, never again. But we landed on a pediatrician we love now who is incredible. And so- it all works out at the end. It is interesting though. Like doctors are so hit and miss. Like when I first got health insurance, remember I went to Kaiser and I was like, well, I don't love this woman, but I guess we don't have to be friends. We're just coworkers. <sighs> and then I went, I accidentally booked what I thought I thought I had booked a gynecologist appointment. I don't know if I talked about this here. Wasn't a gynecologist. was just a regular family doctor, but it, it, she was like, she did a pap smear for me. And as she's like in my snatch, she's like, oh, I'm not a gynecologist. And I was like, well, then what are you doing <laughs> in my pussy right now? And doctor? I couldn't even <laughs> beg my doctor to check out my balls. Well, I guess I have a welcoming vibe. Since we're both at Kaiser, do you think I can see this woman you probably could you but think it's she in wants to play with my balls well, i made her my general practitioner because i liked her so much she probably glendale. what were you doing in glendale Well, because i was trying to just get the first because we were going through the fertility stuff so i was just trying to get the first appointment i could possibly get because i thought they were going to let us do the procedure right away and then the fucking fertility doctor was like we're not going to do the procedure mm -hmm. you can go eat rocks and i was like okay you look cute. I like this necklace a lot. Joe took me shopping. Is this all new stuff? This is new. This is linen like my bed sheets. This is linen like his bed sheets, <laughs> also known as linen. <laughs> linen? Linen. It's not linen? No, it's not. It's not like John Lennon? <laughs> no. Oh. But yeah, Joe got me some cute new shit. He got me this. He got me a dress. Um, I really like this shirt. And then I got in the car and I was like, fuck, do I look like I work in catering? You... <laughs> Lizzie bit. has this thing where she looks in a fit clothing store mirror and she loves it and then she gets home and decides she hates it. I feel no, I like it. I really specifically I like it. Like I like wearing all black and driving the black Tesla. Period. Yeah. <laughs> Period. <laughs> Hello you guys. Today's podcast is sponsored by HelloFresh. And with HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. You skip those horrible trips to the grocery store, and you can always count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable, which is why it happens to be America's number one meal kit. January happens to be the Monday of the year, so don't let boredom strike in your recipes too. HelloFresh has more options than ever. You can dig into their big biggest menu yet with 45 different dinner options to choose from weekly and even more market add-on items to suit any lifestyle. I love that you can turn to HelloFresh's lineup of quick and easy meals including their 15-minute recipes that are designed to help minimize mealtime stress. You can also look at their wholesome and health forward options like calorie smart and protein smart recipes each and every week. I personally love that you can just count on having HelloFresh ready to go in your kitchen whenever your family's hungry. There's no thinking 
about what you have to make for dinner just because it's already there with everything that you need ready to go. So go to HelloFresh.com slash TheSipFree and use code TheSipFree for free breakfast for life. That's one breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash TheSipFree with code TheSipFree. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Today's podcast is sponsored by Stitch Fix. And if you're feeling drab after all of the excitement of the holidays, well, you could welcome the new year with a resolution for personalized style that reflects the real you. And that's courtesy of Stitch Fix's expert team of personal stylists. Stitch Fix is the best way to shop new styles and brands. You can think of them as your style partner. Your stylist will learn about your tastes and collaborate with you on looks you'll love without breaking the bank. You simply share your preferences, sizes, and budget with Stitch Fix, and they'll send you five items in a fix right to your door. With your choices in mind and sizes from extra small to 3XL, they'll find your perfect fit. You can try on everything at home and keep what you like and send back the rest. Shipping and returns are always free. Plus, they have over a thousand brands and styles, so no matter what season of life you're in, Stitch Fix has you covered. You can simply order a refresh as needed or set it and forget it with regular fixes. You're in complete control. Over time, Stitch Fix and their seasoned style experts will match you with greater precision to perfect pieces for you based on your likes and dislikes. I hate nothing more than going to the mall and shopping for clothing, so Stitch Fix is perfect for someone like me. I've had such a great experience. I'm rocking Stitch Fix pieces that I got from Seriously five years ago. So thank you, Stitch Fix. They get me and they will get you too. Try it out at stitchfix.com slash sip and you'll get 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. That's stitchfix.com slash sip. Stitchfix.com slash sip. And what is uh, contributing to your bad morning? Oh, nothing. I think I just got in a rage state. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy how that works out. No, I woke up like, so last night we also went to this, my friend works at this restaurant that Joe and I love going to. It's called Dog House. And we used to order from there all the Is time. Is that the hot dog place? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I got um, I got their pastrami tater tots. Have you had their hamburger? It's well, on no. those small Hawaiian buns. Yeah, their sliders. Oh. See, I love them. And then like Joe and I, but to be fair, before we got there, we had like a whole day. We were like, I we left three hours early. <laughs> for we, dinner yeah we left three hours early for dinner and i was like we're gonna go to target did you go yeah we're gonna oh. go to we went to target twice we're gonna go to nordstrom rack but then like when we got to target the vibes were all off and we How? were like it was awful did you go to a city target we would no, those we, are the I worst i would never go to a, city a target. two-story <laughs> target and a city target give me the fucking ick i hate a two-story target a two-story target should be banned yeah like there's a two-story target on sepulveda by my house and i'm oh. like i can't go there no, I literally bought these pants at a two, at, at the two story Target on Sepulveda, and they didn't take the fucking sensors off. I decided to drive all the way to the one on the way to your house because <laughs> I was like, "Fuck this! If I'm going back, I'm going to a good one." If I'm forced to walk into a two story Target and there's something on the floor that I'm not on, I refuse to go upstairs. Yeah, no, it's a bummer. <laughs> no, no, we're I'm not, never no. gonna do that. I did go upstairs at the one at the Topanga Mall on Friday while I was alone because i didn't have my car my car's in the shop again guys here's the deal i decided oh this is crazy this is net this is crazy so long story short i was in this dispute with a this is a whole left turn yeah this is a whole left turn um with an employer who had not paid me and i was getting livid because first and foremost this employer was obnoxious as fuck and he has this policy where he's like it's a net 40 from when you invoice me that i net 45 most jobs if also you're, is net 45 does that include weekends i don't understand i don't know i think it's literally 45 days from the point of invoice but most jobs i've ever had are net 30 and they pay you within a week of your job mm-hmm. because no matter what that's annoying like i'm working <laughs> minimum wage for a 14 hour day like just send me the 250 you, dollars, you piece of shit right so I, anyway, we're not going to name the job. <laughs> I mean, okay. <laughs> but it was like a five-day job and I still made under $2,000. Like, go ahead and assume I need that money. You know what I mean? If I'm taking that job, I need that money. And I never got paid. And I was livid. And I was li- I was waiting for that check too because it was like during your paternity leave. And like, I don't, like YouTube only pays you once a month. And yeah. I'm just like, I've spent all my money on Disneyland and Taylor Swift and Olivia Rodrigo tickets. I have lived very close to the sun. I went to the Dodgers a bunch of time. I saw three fucking Broadway shows in New York City. Like I have lived this year and I need that $2,000, bitch. It's not even $2,000. It's shy. Anyway, 
So I'm not getting the check. I'm not getting the check, not getting the check. And then the person who got me the job is actually a friend of mine. And I didn't want to muddy our relationship with me hitting her up and being like, where's my money, bitch? Because it's also not her job to pay me. It's right. his job to pay me. So I waited and waited and waited. And she actually wound up texting me. And I was like, hey, I hate to say this, but like, where's my money, bitch? And she goes, oh, we sent the check out. And I go, I did not get it. I did not get the check. I didn't get the check. And then I started like gaslighting myself. I was like, oh, fuck. Maybe I did get the check. Maybe I cashed it. And I don't remember because I'm crazy because I'm a crazy bitch. And then I like I hate looking at my bank accounts, too, especially when, Me I, too. <laughs> when yeah. I look too close to the sun. It's like, I know I have enough for groceries and that's fine. And so I was like, fuck, I have to look at my fucking bank accounts. So then I'm like looking at my bank accounts. I've and, always I do it the same way I do YouTube views. Like when I go to see my <laughs> dashboard, I go to see the ring but I won't look at the views so I'm like this and at the bank account I'm like looking without yeah. trying to see the total because after every bank statement it tells you oh like $13 for lunch yeah. and then it will tell you the remaining estimate like I don't want to know somebody else can tell me well, that the later thing that's just so upsetting it's like money's just always going out and it's never coming in <laughs> like it's just going and going and going and it's like where does it come from and when and so I had but I had to fully look to see because she's like well this is how much the check was for less than $2,000 here's the exact amount and I'm like look Looking for it and I have to look through all my bank accounts because I'm so psycho I'm like what if I did what if I didn't put it in my business account and I put it somewhere else because I'm a fucking moron anyway I didn't get the check I didn't cash the check and I then I felt very vindicated we send I send an email to her boss she helps me she sends the email she goes hey Lizzie didn't get her check can we track it down see if it was cashed ever blah 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 he doesn't respond for Two months, this motherfucker is not responding to a single email about this shit. And then I start stewing. I'm like, well, I got to get crazy now. <laughs> the only thing I can do here is get crazy. By the way, just for anyone in freelance work, there are steps before crazy, right? <laughs> that actually benefit you more if you're not paid by the time frame that you're that you're contractually obligated to be paid by you can take that person to small business court and you can get interest on what they haven't paid really? you. yeah so instead of getting crazy ladies just file some fucking paperwork and take that motherfucker to small claims court and if they don't pay you they put a lien on their inner earnings and you get your fucking money i don't go that way <laughs> my first thought is all right we're going to have to get crazy. <laughs> I'm going to have to find out where his children go to school and meet him at drop off one day. And I'm going to have to let him know, hey, Brian, your kids go here, don't they? And that's what I was going to say. That was the first crazy thought I had. Second crazy thought I had was preemptive. If he didn't respond to the first thing, which was going to be a text message. Hey, just so you know. I have a podcast with 200,000 subscribers, and I am more than comfortable and confident announcing your first and last name, your production company's name, and your personal phone number if you're not going to fucking pay me. And this is also because he was going to charge me a cancellation fee for the check. He was going to take fucking money out of the money I needed to pay me my check that I didn't get from him. Wild. Which is fucking enraging because some of that money was reimbursement of my own money because he runs a fucking sloppy production and I had to fucking pay for the rental car shit with my own money and he because he didn't think it through. <laughs> and I was like, and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm happy to help, bitch. Anyway, all this to say... <laughs> <laughs> this is why I love, and this is why I love Lizzie so much and she does admit when she's wrong I had the check at my house the whole time since November 16th I was at no! my home no! <laughs> she goes cause so Lizzie and I went on a hike this week and you gotta get a fr yourself a friend like Lizzie because when something is unjust in my life this bitch gets mad for me I was actually gonna tell you to stop telling me about things like that because it makes me so mad and I'm so much more powerless when it's in your life <laughs> but then uh, she was telling me this story and I was like yeah you go get him go get him and then I see her on Sunday when she comes over to help with the kids she goes so I had the check the whole time and what's wild about Lizzie's house it's not a mailbox outside it's like a mail slot but, but I don't fuck with the slot because I because it makes my dogs upset so I had taped the slot shut and I put on the slot don't shove shit in here <laughs> And then I put this crazy duct tape on my front door, too, that says, be quiet, sleeping baby. But it's really just because my dogs are nuts. 
<laughs> and I don't want to deal with them responding to the mailman. And so it goes in what, like a tin so, box? Yeah, I put a little Tupperware outside my house and I wrote <laughs> mail on it. And usually that's where the mail gets put. But sometimes, I, at one point, someone removed the mail slot tape. So people had been shoving mail into the mail slot that we don't check since November. And also, this year I thought I got no Christmas cards. Got hella Christmas cards. Are they you going to put them just, on the door now? I threw them away. <gasps> I know, it's crazy. I couldn't have that. It was like a, too much. I still don't throw them away. I have this wooden box and I put all the cards in there because I just feel so guilty throwing away a card somebody went out of. It's I don't it's send not, anyone cards. So neither. when somebody goes out of their way to send me a card that they wrote, put my address on, went to the post office. Yeah. Whew. See, and I usually like I used to keep bags like I keep birthday cards in bags. It's a lot to carry, though. And it's like, am I ever going to look at these again? Never. No. But then I think, well, what if one of these people I'm dies? throwing all my cards away. Oh, and then you I'm want the card. Them. Yeah. You can't let them go. How anyway, did you get me going so hard in both directions? It's crazy. <laughs> this is welcome to my life. And this is probably why I'm in a constant state of rage. <laughs> and so you never once when the check was missing thought, you know, I should check where my mail goes. No, <laughs> never had that thought. And inside of it were multiple notices that my registration was due and I decided oh. and then um, and then it went from being due to delinquent and at delinquency, I guess they inf they force you to get a smog check. And then you have to go to the DMV instead of just paying it online. And I got forced to go. My car is still new enough where I didn't have to get the smog check. But I did have to then go to the DMV. Yeah. But Lizzie's on the phone with me telling me, oh, I got to go get a smog check. And I said, well, you have a Prius that's a hybrid. There's no way it's emitting too much emissions. There's It's a hybrid. Like, you fill up your gas tank yeah. never. It's nuts. 45 minutes later, didn't pass the smog check. So my car riddle me that yeah a fucking riddle hybrid me, riddle me that God how how can a it's, hybrid Prius be emitting too much into the world I think everything in this world happens for a reason and right now I'm learning to check my mail slot <laughs> that's what the Prius has taught you yes <laughs> you know what is really interesting I don't have it here in California but in Colorado it's a daily digest that the USPS sends me a photograph of everything that will be arriving that day into wow. my email so I wonder if I can sign up I mean if they offer it in Colorado it's got to be everywhere right yeah but I don't think that's just for general mail it is. No, I get... They'll send you a picture of your envelopes? Everything that's coming to the house in Colorado, I know, which is useful because I'm... I mean, somebody's at the house in Colorado right yeah. now, but I'm not. So I, I look every day what's going to arrive mm -hmm. and I just say, hey, can you grab this piece of mail if it's important? Wow. And then you know when you're getting paid. Wow. We should all look into that, you guys. We should all look into that, you guys. Um, Anyways, I'm carless now. Wait, so what's going on? Did he call you back, the mechanic? No, no one's called. The mechanic just has my car. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen i saw the evolution of a prius on instagram the other day yeah and it's all these boat looking ugly cars mm -hmm. and then in 2023 they've made it into a sports car oh they have can you believe that that's crazy it's very crazy i mean i like the way the prius looks last time that's I wild i know that's my biggest ick about you i like my prius and i like <laughs> joe's tesla shane had a pre it's like tesla hates me why? Oh, because you're not getting your cyber truck. Yeah, Joe, sh her husband got a notification that her cyber truck is ready to well, be we're fulfilled. Not, we're not getting a cyber. We can't afford the cyber truck. Just to put it on hold was like a certain amount of money. So Joe put mm -hmm. it on hold in case the world turned in our favor by the time it was ready. <laughs> and here's the crazy thing. It hasn't. <laughs> which is, But we keep hoping, you know, we just keep holding out hope for a brighter day. And you know? Shane and I have been waiting for that email for so long. I'm ready to sell the other Teslas and just have the cyber truck. Yeah. Although the other Teslas are worth nothing now. So what thanks, are you, everyone. I, let's have a serious conversation because I might buy your white Tesla. Really? I'm, well, we if have to talk If you'll buy it about... for whatever it's worth, whatever CarMax, if you'll meet CarMax's price, then I'll just, yeah. Okay. Send it along. Okay. Um, because I do, yeah, I, I don't need the Tesla. And especially if we want the Cybertruck eventually. I love the Tesla. I hate that you got white on white. I Oh, well, then you're not going to want my car. And, I, well, I think than... it's sacrilege to get a Tesla and not have the white seats. And I think that's the funnest part for especially filming. That's the only the only reason I keep that Tesla. Well, no, it is very fun to drive. I, I do I love, love the Tesla. I love the Tesla. I just feel safer in my SUV. Oh, I feel safer in the Tesla because it's like, beep, beep, beep. Look at the road, and I'm like, oh my god, you're right. I should have been. It, it, <laughs> you're right. It's nice in that way. In a dr in a driver safety way, it's nice. Yeah. In a car accident way, my SUV is the tankiest tank on the road. Right. So I just feel. Well, I can't even shut your fucking Mercedes door though. I know you got to slam it. 
Yeah, there's a lot. It's Which like is a also a ride, psychological you know? thing that most people have to get past. Because it's think not we, even touch screen. Though. We like, all can't touch Isn't this. that trash? And it's a huge screen. That's but you trash. can't touch it. And I'm just always in his car, just touching it. <laughs> and nothing's and it's happening. Like you would think this really like this is fifty million car. dollar car would you have a touch screen. You think you could be able to touch to the next Taylor Swift song, nope, but you can't. You can't. <laughs> can't do it. It does have. Uh, mas- massages in the chair mas- which, massages, which you kept for me seats. for years uh, it doesn't have the heated steering wheel that the Tesla does have yuck crazy right yuck <laughs> but uh, wh- I am curious to see when the- I think the G-Wagon all electric comes out this year but now Ooh. I have kids so I shouldn't be just spending money anymore oh you couldn't trade it in I could could I trade you my Prius for your Tesla no. Okay. I was just checking. <laughs> I didn't, I wanted to know. I just wanted to know. Okay. You stepped on a B. Oh, I was on, I was working on Sunday, working, editing my vlog. FaceTiming me. No, I'm literally getting to that. Okay. I'm working, editing my vlog, went up yesterday. If you guys want to know how to cook meals for your dog at home that are well-balanced and nutritious and good for their microbiomes, watch my fucking well, vlog. You're a better dog mom than all of us. I'm a better dog mom than yeah all of us <laughs> you said it right <laughs> no i did tell lizzie i said you're gonna be the best mom one day because the way you take care of these dogs is better than most children are taken care of well icky now eats on a tempur pad because i think the way that we were feeding him previously was upsetting his hindquarters so <laughs> right okay. and it's really cute because now he even stretches on his tempur pad and it looks like a little dog yoga mat oh. it's really cute Anyway, <laughs> okay. check out the vlog, guys. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Your B. Oh, so I'm in the middle of editing my vlog, and my friend who just had a couple of babies called, and I said, you know what? Work can wait. Thank I'll you. make time for my, my new mom friend. Right. So I take the call. We're chatting. I'm walking around outside. We hang up. Icky's trying to go after his squirrel friends. I said, no, Icky, don't go after the squirrel friends. He's not listening because he's blind with squirrel rage. And I get it. I'm blind with rage a lot of the time, too. So I run across the grass to go pick his little fat ass up so that he doesn't hurt himself or the squirrels. And I stepped on a fucking bee. And did it sting when you stepped? Yeah, it stung when I stepped. Ooh. Um, I hate a bee sting. I just have a tiny mark now. Like, it's not... You can't... Oh. It's not bad. You got the stinger out, though? Like I got the stinger out right away because I know. I've been stung by bees so many times. I'm like, oh, fuck. Have I ever fuck. told you that I'm convinced my mole on my lip is because I was stung on I've, my mouth when I was a kid? I think you might have told us that three years ago. Okay. I don't think of that. Just an case. interesting fact about me. But then when you see my sister has the same, same one, one it kind of yeah. debunks the myth. It really but does. how is it that I don't remember it prior to that bee sting? <laughs> how, well, how old were you? How old were you? Probably third grade. I mean, but you don't really have a memory of anything. Okay. Thanks a lot. Sorry. <laughs> You've said that yourself. I know. That's the end of my bee sting story. I've, I've instantly put uh, baking soda and water on it in like a paste form. And that actually helps get some of the pain to go away quickly if you... Let it drain the poison out. Is get that, that what stinger told out. You? No, just to get instinct. To put baking soda on your body? No, I want my goddad did it one time, so now I do it, okay. and it helps. And then you made. Um, let me see. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, I mean, I didn't bring the vision board, so why even talk about oh, it? Oh gosh, <laughs> I know she was sending me pictures of the vision boards her and her friends were making, and I said, "Well, bring it, and we can do a show and tell where you point out the different things on your vision board that Tune are in important next to week, you this guys. year." It's not that interesting. I'm, I mean, it's not. It's like everybody's vision board. You know, I want a baby. I want money. I want bravery. You know, <laughs> sometime I want to go to Rome. I know that's not going to happen. We're working on the we're working on the vision board, and I was like, damn, I'd love to put Rome on there. They're like, put it on there. I was like, I'm not going to make it. To Rome. <laughs> You're like, we also need to. They're be like, realistic. well, that's the point of a vision board. I was like, right, but like, I'm not making it to Rome. <laughs> like. <laughs> it's the sad fact i'm not going to rome guys my goal is for one of these netflix shows to just call me you and know? take you to rome no just take me in general right because i saw i never have seen queer eye but you you all know that once i was being considered for queer eye and yeah. now those those guys are all like big stars in their own right um and i just i just saw the headline one of them was leaving and i clicked and i said oh what's the drama <laughs> um yeah and then that just had me thinking like oh well, it would be, uh, then I started rethinking all of my career choices and I thought, you know, maybe I could DM Jason Oppenheimer, tell him 
I'll get my real estate license and I'll be the first boy on Selling Sunset since they have yeah. boys in the OC. Yeah. And I'll really come in there and just try to fuck shit up and get all these Why girlies. Why don't you just get your real estate license? Why don't you just do that first? Why don't you just do it? Well, no, I want to be like all these girls on Selling Sunset that Jason just says okay to and then they get their real estate license. Is that really what happened? I mean, most of them, it's more so a girl's friend that's pretty and Jason likes and it's going to be a good addition for the show. I don't think how they actually run their day-to-day business life, that's how it goes because there's so many agents at that firm Mm -hmm. that aren't on the show. But I think the last three members were pretty much, I just got my real estate license and all the girls are, have you sold any houses? And it's like, have you guys sold any houses? (laughs) (laughs) You can bring your sassy ass up from there. So, you know, that's just, that's That's my vision board without making one. Would you want to make one? No. Okay. Absolutely not. Okay. (laughs) I just want one of these shows to call, you know, like when Real Friends of WeHo was on, I never got the call. I don't think I've ever heard of it. Oh, it was just, it's basically Real Housewives, but MTV did a version where they followed gay guys in WeHo, only like a couple lived in WeHo. Cool. I think I think I could be, I think I could serve some drama on one of those shows. I think you absolutely could. You've got, you're crazy. Thank you. <laughs> and you don't give a fuck. And if you just feel a little bit validated in your rage, you will ride it to Even the sunset. Sh- Shane's editing a main channel video that's turning out really good. I'm so excited. But he goes, there were a lot of things that you said that I just can't cut around. And I hope you don't regret it. And, <gasps> and I said, you know. I think people love his brother, Jared, because he says what he wants to say yeah. and it's refreshing. And I'm at a point in my life, people have already made their, uh, if you don't like us, yeah. you're not consuming us. Yeah. So why not just try to be real and yeah. authentic and say what I want, even if it's unpopular? I love that for you. Thank you. Should we just do that right now? <laughs> yeah. What do you have to say that's unpopular? What are our unpopular opinions? I'm so scared. No, I have not. I only <laughs> have popular opinions. <laughs> Should we get into some uh, hot toppies? Yeah, let's get into some or hot toppies. Or do you want to take a quick break so one of us can urinate? Uh, I don't know that I want to do that. Because I know, because you're on a tight schedule because that bitch ruined my pee schedule. I know, and I had planned it because, oh, I haven't even told you guys, we're going to the grocery store because... Today? L- yeah, that's... yeah. Well, then let's break down right now. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, I got to tell everyone what we're trying. Little Debbie's. Did you both grow up eating Little Debbie snacks? Were they in your pantries? No, I was... Uh, are you kidding me? My dad fed me Slim Fast and said, if you eat Slim Fast, you won't need real food. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, okay. This episode's only for me because they have turned Little Debbie's into ice cream bars. Ooh. The Cosmo... Oh, oh, my God. I... I hope they're at the grocery store and if they're not well then we're just going to keep talking at you in the car do you want me to do hot toppies in the car uh i'm just trying to pee to be real okay we could do that we could do hot topics in the car um and i just want to say for all of you i ask all of you moms out there that are really in the thick of it right now i ask even the woman who helps us i go are all these girls online? Is that real? And she goes, no, what you're doing, this is how taking care of babies looks like. It's not just this rainbows and butterflies out there. And I said, without help, I would, not that I don't love it and that it's not the best experience ever, but we would crumble. So I don't want anyone to ever think, because I feel this way. I'll watch girls on YouTube just running about the world and doing everything. And I think, wow, they're doing it all. And it's, I don't want anyone to ever think that about me. I have help and it's still hard and I have a husband. You know, it's just, it's a lot. It's a lot to take care of newborns. So I just want to say, I see you girls. We salute you ladies. And any of you girls that are doing it, just raw dogging it by yourself. Even like if your husband's at work and you're just there doing it and you're taking your kids napping right now, you know what? God bless you. Today's podcast is also sponsored by Rocket Money. And I genuinely love Rocket Money because this app does all the hard work for me. I am somebody who just gets bored when you start talking about finances. It's something that's really hard for me to want to learn about, but thanks to Rocket money, I can see exactly what's coming into my bank accounts versus what's going out. I have access to my credit score at all times and they showcase and manage all of my subscriptions. I was floored when I went into my subscriptions and saw how many apps I was paying for that I didn't actually use or an app that I was paying for that Shane was also paying for and we're both paying for the same.
same app, living in the same house. It's just too much. And in case you don't know, Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions. It monitors your spending and helps you lower your bills. Like I said, I can see all of my subscriptions in one place. And if I see something I don't want, I can cancel it with a tap. I never have to get on the phone with customer service. And they'll even try to get a refund for the last couple of months of wasted money and negotiate to lower your bills for you by up to 20%. All you have to do is take a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped its members save on average of $720 a year with over 500 million in canceled subscriptions. So stop wasting your money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash sip. That's rocketmoney.com slash sip. Rocketmoney.com slash sip. <laughs> hey girls. Okay, so, oh my gosh. What? I have to have my phone. The car's I have your running. Phone. You can oh, show okay. Your I was like, we're in the car and this is how the Tesla works, so it's got to be this way. Um, I was going to pull up what we're it's actually going to get. Don't talk to me right now, please. Here, will you tell them what we're going to get? So, we're Little Debbies. Little Debbies. You clowns weren't eating them as kids, but this is what I grew up on like the Star Crunches. Oh my gosh, I know you all know. <laughs> The Star Crunch ice cream bar. Ooh. There's a oh, I have had a Nutty Bar. Yeah, of course. <laughs> There's strawberry like, shortcake where, rolls ice not... cream bars. Mm. Birthday Ooh. cake ice cream. Damn, those all look pretty delish. Yeah. And that's what I was saying, and they're like the bite-sized bars. There's Ooh. a crumble here. Sorry. Yeah, it, re it replaced the <laughs> La Pan, huh? No. Okay. Nice try though. Oh, Whatever. But there is a crumble now, which is they're going up everywhere now. So. A year and a half ago, there wasn't even one within an hour. Wow, we got princess parking. Thank but you, Walter. How's it gonna do for our lighting when we come back? Oh yeah, a year ago, Lizzie was smuggling crumbles on the plane ride back from Denver. That was over a year ago. <laughs> yeah, this lighting isn't like gonna work out for us. our taste <laughs> test. Thank it's you. Not bad. It's really bad. <laughs> Thank you, God, for this spot, but it's not gonna work out for us. <laughs> We'd rather be in the middle of the road. Thanks, Walter. <laughs> mm. Do you want to start with one hot topic before we go in? Yes, I'd love to. Thank you for asking. You're welcome. <laughs> In this lighting of all lighting. Yeah, while you look up that, I'm going to find new lighting. Okay, so some crazy shit happened. Okay. Michael Sarah was seen out in these streets buying a fuck ton of CeraVe face wash and lotion. Okay. Michael Sarah CeraVe. And I clicked on this link because I was trying to think, oh, so is it's he just- It's so bizarre I don't even have like a follow up for it. I'm just like, why the fuck did he do that? And then at first I was like, oh, he's just being a good guy. Like he's giving out hygiene products on the streets. But then he was also putting his name on it and stickers. No, yeah, he's doing weird shit. I why think is he doing that? His last name's Sarah. And so the V, and then he went on a podcast and he's kind of pretending like maybe he has some ownership in it. And I thought, The no. company's doing well without him being weird. <laughs> I thought Sarah V had been around forever. And then yeah. I Googled it and they were originated in 2006. So it is potential that he started this, but I still In 2006, call bullshit. wasn't he with 16? I think this uh, company's just trying to get crafty. I think it's the marketing team got together with him and thought- and gave him a hundred million dollars to be weird? <laughs> to be weird. What if it has nothing to do and with Sarah And it's working because when's the last time we've talked about Michael Sarah? Like I know he's a talented actor, yeah. but you don't talk about him no, in he, the news. No, you keep his name out your mouth. That's what you do. <laughs> but I will say, this isn't going to work for me. Sarah V's trash. <gasps> Well, Dermatologists back it. Maybe the face wash is like the is fine, but their lotion is trash. I'm an Aveeno boy all yeah, day, every I day. I mean, I use the Aveeno body lotion all over my face. The CeraVe uh, lotion, my hands are dry again within 20 minutes. Is it for your hands? I love their lotion. I mean, yeah, you use their lotion? I do, I love it. Are your hands dry, brother? No. Are you using them on your hands or your face? Let me see your palms. Oh, wow. Well, of course his hands yeah. are definitely moisturized. This motherfucker's always jacking off. <laughs> I'm just saying, I know that's like the number one, like just basic facial wash yeah. and fine if that's what works for you girls, but that <laughs> lotion is trash. <laughs> <laughs> and I stand by everything I say. Me and Jennifer wow. Aniston will be buying Avena till the day we die. Same, honestly. I think I have. Oh my gosh! Should I be yes. Using See? yes. I have my whole Avena. I'm full dripping size. in Avena right now. Fucking face to pussy. Nothing but Avena on this bitch. You converted me. I'll get Avena. It's so good. I want some right now. Ooh, not sponsored. Ooh, hasn't been used in. Oh gosh, that yeah. creamy goodness. Ooh. That CeraVe is just liquidy trash. Can I try it? Yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah, you can compare like immediately. Compare and despair. Do you have Chris. CeraVe left over from this morning? Oh uh, yeah. 
Welcome to what moisture really feels like, Chris. <laughs> Ooh, wait. Well, let us know in 10 minutes after we get back from the grocery but store. But it feels like silky. Do you the want... CeraVe feels like watery. That's what I'm telling you. It's like a water-based lube. It's trash. Wow. I don't know if it's water-based, but have you guys used a water-based lube? It's trash. It seems like a silicone water lube I don't think I've used a water-based water lube. It's just a lot more dry. I don't use a lot of lube in my <laughs> day. Well, that's because you're <laughs> pussy. Oh, <wow. laughs> that's because... <laughs> I got a, a luscious, dripping pussy. Well, vaginas produce the... the Lubricant? Yeah. Your, your pussy I think, doesn't I don't think assholes itself? do. Oh, wow. Unless you want to... Okay, this is a well, lot. Well, you have a sweaty asshole. It's getting big, though, so... It is juicy. Do you want? Asshole? Do you want to have a quick conversation about Sophia Richie Grange's pregnancy? I only hear about her when she's getting married or now that she's pregnant. And she's having a little girl. If she would document this on YouTube, I would probably consume. Right. Okay. Maybe she will. And her statement is she will not be shopping in the maternity section. Nope, nope, nope. She and Rihanna are Rihanna. Do not fuck with maternity sections. And that's because they're rich with access to every designer in the world. That's fair, but also I feel like maternity sections like do moms so dirty. Like, what <laughs> the fuck? I've been seeing shit online like, you want a sneaky way to rip your titty out in public? Buy this hideous sweater. And nobody needs that sweater. You know what I mean? But sweaters that have like zippers on the side and you just flop a titty out and then you flop it back. <laughs> Seems convenient to me. I don't know. Yeah, but it's like, it's so ugly. Like the way that they made it is so ugly. Yeah, but it's also like you buy all these cute baby clothes and then it's so impossible to put on that you're like, give me the ugly simple thing. And most of us that aren't Rihanna and Sophia Coppola, who is this? Richie Grange. Yeah, <laughs> that aren't them. <laughs> it's not practical to, j and I understand. I think a lot of hers was just saying, I'm still going to wear like my oversized jacket yeah. and wear things that still work with my pregnancy and I do agree with that but I think a lot of us moms we they, people get so enraged that I keep calling myself I was a mom say, too. you didn't really need to you, you don't need to talk about maternity clothes buddy like that's the one thing you can't relate to so I mean there's a few more maternity clubs clothes are expensive and they're hideous they're very expensive. They run a racket on that shit, too. They upcharge yeah. you for, like... So I would just wear the things that you can wear, but I'm saying yeah. there's got to be some yoga pants that would be nice to probably just get one or two in maternity. Yeah, I'm sure. To make your life And they're easy. $115. But I think these women, it's easier for them to say because not only are the funds unlimited... Right. They have designers probably begging... Sending them. To send them... Designer... Designer stuff that works. Maternity? No, it's not maternity, though. What is the word? But when's the last time either of the, like, maybe Rihanna does go to Target. I don't know. I, I can see her. her in Target. I love Queen Oh, Riri. I love Rihanna. I love Riri. Riri. <laughs> Riri. Watching her do the Super Bowl pregnant, I'm like, wow. And then you think about it and it's like, oh, I couldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I felt so empowered watching well, that. Nobody could do that not pregnant. Dude, I felt so empowered watching that performance. I was like, it never stops. And then I really think about it. It's like, oh, I'm And not then doing that. cut back to me being like, it wasn't enough. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> All right, let's go get your little Debbies, you fucking weirdo. I pray to God they have them. You want to go to Crossroads? Just get a quick little Crossroads it's delicious. Lunch. Look at this beautiful winter day. Let's get some Crossroads. It's right there. If I had my properly We're allowed time. Oh, fuck. I hurt my beast. If my freaking appointment wasn't rescheduled, I would have had time to go to lunch. The Valentine. Oh, yes. Ooh. A sweet candy that Elizabeth wants to try. Yes, That was please. strawberry peeps. I do love a peep. Peep uh, the Valentine's Day section. Oh my god! They're right there! Where? Right no there. way! Oh my god! Wait! Oh, this feels I really like thought I just this was gonna be a flop. I thought. Oh my god! It's because it's always a flop with him. This feels staged because I just started oh filming. You guys. <laughs> Don't be doing that! Don't be doing that! That's how you get a blue dot by your name. You're a father now. What? You can't be humping ice cream at couple of. So I think they're only missing one. Here. With the birthday cake. Whoa! This is really exciting. <laughs> the birthday cake is the only one that's missing. Yeah, I was excited for that Whoa. one. What? Wait, the strawberry? No. Yeah. Let me see. I'm telling you. Okay, but I can't just believe you. Wow. <laughs> Have you met Here me? Here comes the gaslighter. Oh my gosh. And those ones are good. What was it? Those hit. Which is uh, the one that's missing? Birthday cake ice cream bars. Crazy. And look at, do you remember those, you guys? So delicious. Okay, well. I was honestly thinking they might only have one, so three out of four, that's like that's 75%. That's pretty G. That's 75%? <laughs> it is. Can you just congratulate me? Yay! <laughs> and we got the sour strawberry marshmallow peach. These are just for me though, I'm not sharing. <sighs> oh my gosh. We gotta go. I know. This is my like, so 
we're obviously going to have to compare the strawberry rolls to these. Oh, I love them. These are like my these favorite are fantastic. from childhood. Hold on, let's see if these have red dye in them. I'm sure they do. <laughs> yeah, red dye 40, these will kill you. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's on a kick about everything that will kill you. Oh my gosh. Joe won't let me use Tide detergent anymore. Oh, well, do you want what? to just start talking? Because it'll kill you. Wait. What do you use? I used it last night without telling him and I woke up to a text from him. Hey, why don't you know I moved your laundry into the dryer for you? It smells like Tide. Do you think it's just coated the washing machine? I just had to say, no, he used it again. Wait, we can't do Tide Pods anymore? No. But, okay, I'll talk to you later off the <laughs> camera. Sorry. <laughs> Oh my god, if eat him right now. Right now oh, oh, oh. Daddy said I could try it right now. I'm not really a peeps girl. I don't like things that are just completely sugar coated. Watch me love it. Ooh, they're all stacked up. Pretty cute. Are they so Ooh, oh, and they're fragrant. Mm. I love it. Is it good? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. It's subtle sour, but then the sugar is sweet with the marshmallow. It's so good. Is it really? Yeah, that might be the most I've ever liked the peak. Okay, we gotta go. We gotta go. Bye. I really am the worst person in public when I'm filming. I have like, I can't, I black out and I can't comprehend what's going on around me. You focus on the work. <laughs> yes, I'm focusing on being an <laughs> asshole. I'm focusing on the work. <laughs> Okay, Chris, your turn for the strawberry sour. Let me just You both it. loved them, so I'm excited. I have horrible news. What? what? Red Dye 40 is in that. So what's your new thing with Red Dye 40? It's not a new thing, it just it kills you. Like, <laughs> so are you going to really try to tell me that we're not allowed to eat snow anymore, too? Uh, yeah. You are such a buzzkill. What do you want from me? I think Am I the buzzkill? Hold on, do you like it? Mm. It's great. It's, it's delicious. It's really good. Uh, it's the sourness is nice because normally they're like so sweet that it's too sweet. It's just the right amount of sour yeah. and then the sugar kicks in. Honestly, I wish, peeps, you don't have to make them red. Like, we'll eat them if they taste like this in any color. <laughs> oh, so the flavor would be the same. It's just for yeah. the visuals? Yeah. Hmm. Come on, guys. Knock it off. Let us enjoy the food without being scared for our lives. Do you guys really good. remember the Star Crunch bars? Tell me no. you've had them. No. Oh my gosh. They're like so ooey and gooey with the perfect crunch. I'm hoping these have like the actual crunch on the bars themselves. Woo! You just can't tell me though that like, it would be really hard for me to believe if you're in a place where it snows, you can't eat the snow that's falling. Like obviously if it's on the ground and super compact. They're just saying that when the snow goes through the atmosphere, it goes, if you're in a densely populated area, it's going through all the exhaust of the cars and all the pollution in the sky. And then what you're doing is directly consuming pollution and fucking chemicals. Right, but if you just take one lick, I think you'll survive. Yeah, and why not just, you know, suck off the back of a car's exhaust pipe? I don't think it's the equivalent. <laughs> You're the one that failed a smog test. And I'm also not trying to suck off that pipe. Cheers, Mama. Cheers. I don't know if you... Okay. Ooh. No one took a bite yet. That was cool. It's crunchy. What flavor is the ice cream? Coffee? Mmm. Can I show the box? Mmm. Wow, it has the exact essence. I wouldn't know. I hate that you guys don't. Caramel, caramel flavored, flavored ice, ice cream. cream with a caramel bourbon and crispy bits dipped in milk chocolate. They got the flavor profile exact. I think it's really good. I love it. It slaps. Mm. Wow. It's great. If we didn't have four more to try, or two more to try, I would eat this whole bar. Mm. If chocolate mm -hmm. wouldn't mm -hmm. kill me, because I'm a dog, I would eat the whole bar. Okay. Nutter butter. I know all of you know what a nutter butter bar is. Nutty butter. Nutter. It's not nutter butter. Yeah. I like biting the layers apart. <coughs> Wait, I'm choking on the crispies. <laughs> <coughs> I, don't I need the I, next thing. I don't know if I've had a nutty bar. Really? <laughs> Where did you guys grow up? Is this like, did California people not do this? <laughs> I don't know. I'm so shocked. Well, I also had foreign bears. I had a nutty bar. So this should have the essence of peanut butter heavy. My parents didn't know what football is. You know what I mean? Like, they didn't know what football was? Uh, it's not a thing in the rest of the world. <laughs> Lizzie pose for me. Oh. Well, we'll just do the bar. I got a bad feeling about this one. Really? Yeah, I think so. What? Tastes a little dirty. 
Do you see what I mean? Hold on, right now that whole bite was just chocolate. Mm. Hmm. Like the peanut part's not hitting. Mm. No, I like it, but I know what you mean about like the dirty aspect. Yeah. I think I like the other one more. Mm-hmm. The Star Crunch's flavor palette is also just a little more... This is just chocolate and peanut butter. Uh-huh. Like, it's good. I would definitely eat this. Mm-hmm. I, th I don't think they could make an ice cream bar I'm going to not like, if I'm being I honest. I would do fuck with ice cream. I will say that. Mm. 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 <laughs> no, I love it. Mm. <laughs> it's still good, for sure. Mm. This looks very interesting because it's... It has the strawberry infused throughout the entire bar, and it looks like there's the cake pieces inside. Also has red dye 40. <laughs> it couldn't just be strawberry. They couldn't get a natural color. You guys have to kill us. But I don't know how, like, this is so Gwyneth Paltrow of you, thank all you, the things you. that you can't do. <laughs> it's just because literally other countries have banned this substance because it kills you. I yeah. understand what you're saying, but then what are we supposed to do? Like, you can't have a candle. You can't eat anything. No. You can't have snow consumerism that's falling in from the Consumerism sky. in America wants you to die, it's which true. is crazy. It's true. My, my uncle says that all the time. It's not about not living your life. It's about making choices so that you actually yeah. can live your life. It feels like I'm not allowed to live my life, if I'm being quite honest with you. There if you're dying wow. of cancer, you're certainly not allowed to live your life. Keep thumbnailing. I don't know why that's enraging me so much. <laughs> Cancer. <laughs> okay, but is it scientifically proven? Yes. Oh, jeez. It's literally outlawed in countries because it's killing people. Yeah. That's okay. why I'm saying it. That, that is true. <laughs> that part is. Is it true. scientifically proven? Yes. <laughs> well, I don't know about the specifically red dye forty. Yeah, specifically red dye forty. Okay. Well, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Yum. <laughs> this one doesn't have chocolate. It won't kill me. Mmm. Wow. Ah, this is giving the exact flavor profile of the one you said you loved as a kid. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. You even get the cake bites inside of there, which is what I thought I was going to miss. Mmm. Mmm. I love it. I love it. I love it. I, I will eat the entire thing, but I'm not sure uh, I love it. My, <laughs> <laughs> my problem with the chocolate one, sometimes the chocolate is just too overbearing of the ice cream. Mm -hmm. I still like it. But I'm a bigger fan of the ice cream than the hardened chocolate itself. So mm. this is more of... I love the little chunks. See, Ooh. usually oh. my go-to ice cream bar is a haagen bar with the nuts on the outside. Vanilla ice cream, chocolate on oh. the outside, nuts on it. That's my go-to. That's got to be chemically infused. I actually think haagen is one of the better ice creams. It's got a lot of natural sugar in it instead of like the sugar fructose shit, which is not good for you. haagen is... Joe lets quality. me have haagen <laughs> Wow. Well, this is delicious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I it's between the Star Crunch and well hold on. Is it... I love this, but I'm also that might be it's the not chocolate, butter. so it's not gonna kill me, so I'm biased. I think <laughs> but I love it. Mm. You know though with the Star Crunch, normally a chocolate dipped thing bothers me because I want the creaminess of the ice cream more than the crunch of the chocolate. But yeah, unique to this flavor profile, for some reason I'm living for the nutter butter chocolate. I think because <laughs> of the nostalgia. <laughs> I'll give you that. That's why I'm watching The West Wing. Mm. <laughs> like I'm biting into my 10-year-old self. That That's a really crazy thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what I mean. Like I'm, it's, it's transporting me back to being 10 years old. Yeah, when you would bite yourself. <laughs> <laughs> You're nasty. <laughs> Your word's not mine. Okay, what other hot topic do you have on this Rose. list? Mm. Thank you for these. You're welcome. Next hot topic. Mm hmm. Mm, let's pray. Let's all say a little prayer for Justin Timberlake, who's having a hard time in the media right now. I don't know that he is. Wait, why? If he can just, sir, if he can just like. Can we give the backstory for everybody to know what's going on? Chris, I mean, yeah. Chris just asked why. I don't know. So, Justin Timberlake's been getting a bad rap for being a bad person in the early 80s oh. when he was a teenager. He mm -hmm. was pretty shitty to Britney Spears in their relationship. Oh. Then she wrote a tell all book about how he made her get an abortion because he wasn't ready to have a child. And she took an abortion pill. And while she was going through the agony of chemically miscarrying the baby, he decided to 
play her acoustic guitar, which is really a no tone deaf choice. And then proceeded to write an album about her while they were still together, and but then kind of ghosted her yeah. when the album came out. Yeah. And then she was just, wait, so you were writing this album while we were together? And so when her, he just debuted a new single, which is honestly kind of hard for me to get behind, not because of him as a person, but because of the song itself. It's not great. I like the chorus, but everything around it, like the beginning and the, it just, it's not working for me. The song is called Selfish and it came out and it was like number one on the iTunes charts. And then when Britney's fandom saw that because they hate him. They went and started buying Britney's song Selfish from 2011, and then it became number oh. one on the charts, and Justin's dropped to number three. Oh, that's kind of cool. <laughs> and not only, I mean, it's, I think it's very funny, and that's one thing I love about the internet, <laughs> but I will say this, Justin Timberlake has grown up, and like, granted, there's been cheating scandals with his wife now, and all this stuff, but... There has? Yeah. There's been rumors of infidelity um. and inappropriate behavior and blah, 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 but... I also think that it's not fair to punish someone perpetually for choices they made as a shitty teenager with that mm -hmm. kind of fame. Yeah. Um, the other thing I want to say is this morning, Ryland, hot off the presses, hit me with Britney Spears' Instagram post, which was a picture of Jimmy Fallon and Justin Timberlake. Sorry, I'm vomiting in my mouth because of all the red dye 40. <laughs> <laughs> it's a quick decline, you guys. <laughs> Um, she said, I, I, re I regret saying things that hurt people I love in my book. I think Justin Timber Timberlake's song slaps and him and Jimmy Fallon couldn't be funnier. Mm -hmm. Whoa. And yeah. I think she said multiple times after the book came out, like I wasn't expecting, which I know when you're writing something that's such a bombshell as I got an abortion and he wasn't really because of him and he wasn't really there for me in a yeah. large way. I think she was just trying to tell her story mm -hmm. and it really, it really did flip around as like the world was attacking Justin Timberlake, which I mean, people are allowed to feel however they want, but this was also an incident that was 20 years ago. Yeah. Uh -huh. So interesting to see her kind of speak out. And also like it's, it is her truth. Right. And Lamont said, if you don't want me to write what you did, then don't do it. That's not what she said. It's very close. I'm paraphrasing. Yeah. If and you wanted me to write well about you, you should have been weller. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, do you guys care about Barbie's Greta Gerwig and Margot Robbie being snubbed by the Oscars? I think it's weird. Yeah, it's definitely <laughs> weird. Like, the whole point of the movie was, like, to empower women, and then none of the women get... Well, American for... I just want to... I want to know what the, the like, room looked like. Well, it got nominated like. for Best Picture... And this is the second time that a Greta Gerwig film has been nominated for Best Picture and she's been not awarded as a director. Maybe they have an axe to grind with her. Well, what's interesting to me is, like, I wasn't big on the Barbie movie. Like, it's not a movie that I enjoyed, but I did leave that movie feeling so inspired by Greta Gerwig's directorial execution. And I was yeah, I exactly. I was taken aback by Margot Robbie too. I quite yeah. frankly thought, uh, and I like Ryan Gosling, but I thought his character and that was the most annoying part of the movie. Like that was my least favorite part. Which the internet's takeaway was that was their favorite part. I was going to say a lot of people thought he stole the show. Yeah. And a lot of people were like, they should give him a Ken spinoff. And I was like, I couldn't be more fucking annoyed by him <laughs> in that role. <laughs> and I thought, I'm so impressed by Margot Robbie yeah. being like the person that created and conceptualized this and then brought, I think she was I the one that brought I think it's so Greta. nuts to nominate America Ferreira and not Margot Robbie. It's a green yeah. light. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I do, but you know, at the same time... I do think there's something fishy about, like, other times, like, to be honest, I, I couldn't sit through Little Women. I could watch, I watched Lady Bird, but it's not like I wanted to watch it again. I love Lady Bird. <laughs> <laughs> Have I you seen, seen it multiple it. times? <clears throat> uh, twice. Oh, good for you. This woman thinks we stopped because of her. Oh, okay. I'll she couldn't going. be more sus right now. No, we're her. just filming. She does she think she we're gonna do something? She needs to just mind her own fucking business. <laughs> uh, yeah, like she's the one in the, the middle of nowhere. Look, yeah, like, maybe she thought she's waiting for an Uber. And she, no, I was just I feel like she was on Facetime. She's like, these fucking weirdos in a Tesla are looking at me. It's like, no, you're looking at me. 
Um, uh, I just thought it was funny, like, well, I didn't fully read either of their statements, but it's like, America Ferrera and Ryan Gosling are both like, they should be nominated, and then they're like, but thank you to the Academy for yeah. nominating us. <laughs> yeah. It's like, we've got to play both sides. And of course they're excited to be nominated, yeah, but it is all kinds I, of fucked up that they're that Greta and Margot aren't. I think that there can be a world in which, because like, you know, Jennifer Lawrence was nominated for Silver Lines Playlist, and Bradley Cooper wasn't. And that was yeah. 10 years ago. I know, but- And in, Bradley Cooper's performance in Silver Linings Playbook was fucking beautiful. And just because there's, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I think everybody is entitled to be, to compartmentalized excitement for themselves. And, you know, it is shocking that Greta Gerwig was not nominated. I'm not as shocked by the Margot Robbie of it all. Margot Robbie's nomination not happening and America Ferrera's happening is confusing to me. Well, they gave America that big monologue that went so viral. Yeah, yeah but they gave Margot that whole movie. <laughs> <laughs> or she created it for herself. Exactly. Really. But that's not, that doesn't go into your performance like breakdown or qualifications for an Academy Award, but we all know the Academy Awards are fucking rigged anyway. It's all about people spending money and like to having these luncheons and sucking the man's dick. <laughs> well, it's all politics. Yeah, and it's... I don't fucking and I don't fucking care, you guys. It's become such a political fucking nightmare that it doesn't even feel like an accolade anymore. It's just like, all right, I pandered. Give me the award. <laughs> so you're not looking forward to the Oscars. <laughs> I haven't looked forward to the Oscars in a very fucking long time. I think the last time I enjoyed watching the Oscars was when South Park Bigger, Longer, and Uncut was nominated. Whoa. <laughs> but I do think it is odd to be nominated for Best Picture multiple times and have the director and writer and producer not also nominated in her respective categories. Yeah. I think that's wild. And uh, the, the Barbie screenplay is nominated hmm. for Greta and Noah Baumbach. So really, Margot's the only one that's missing out. Kind of, but more than anything, like the fact that Greta wasn't nominated for director is, yeah. is really crazy to me because what she executed practically yeah. is fucking brilliant. Yeah. And it's undeniably brilliant because I didn't even give a fuck about the movie. <laughs> and I walked out thinking, wow, that bitch fucking did that. Yeah. And that's sick. Agreed. To make a movie that someone doesn't really like and still walks away thinking, way to fucking go, bitch. <laughs> That's crazy. That's good directing. <laughs> so that's how I felt about Margot. So I'm over <laughs> here for you, Margot. Oh, you. What? That's a confusing thing you said. You do not think her performance was great, but you still rode for it? Or you uh, didn't like her, but you still rode for her? No, I didn't like the movie. Right. But I still Love like Margo. am such a fangirl of Margot. I think it's so impressive that she's oh. younger than me and had I just think it's weird <laughs> that we're we're no, it's just, yeah. it is, it's crazy. Yeah. She's like had so much success at such a young age and she's she also this massive produced star. I Tonya. And I just think Whoa. she's an yeah. impressive woman. She's brilliant. Yeah. And I think in the year of women. Taylor Swift, Barbie, Fuck yeah. Beyonce, Fuck all of yeah. these powerful women that moved our economy forward were not acknowledging the women at the Oscars. And Changed I Changed the global economy. But I haven't seen the other that like the other people that are directed in place of them. I mean, I but so I sure as hell haven't heard of them if I didn't know that they were. And that's weren't. the fucking point. It's like anatomy of a fall, cute poster, can't sit through it. <laughs> All, right. All these other titles. Well, I do think Poor Things is probably great. I just haven't seen it yet. It's so good, Liz. Don't spoil it. I'm going with a friend when she gets back in town. <laughs> but, um, and the last thing I want to say is, turns out the NFL is not scripted because the two people going to the Super Bowl are the Chiefs and the Niners. Okay. So. I saw Taylor Swift was there as his biggest cheerleader. Yeah. Sometimes I just feel like he needs to be cheerleading for her. Like she's the he biggest is. star. He in goes the... to her show. No, I know, but like Twice. for some we reason went to more shows because than it's you, Travis. so yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I would love to date her. I'm just like Taylor Swift is the moment, and yeah. I feel like she's his. Uh, not groupy, but like she's. I his... think she's proud. I think it's really fucking dope. It's probably she... very fun too. I think she's never gotten to have a relationship that's just like we don't give a fuck about what you say. Right. And Travis Kelsey is so I don't give a fuck about what you say. And I do love the like the the two of them together look great. And I I'm like glad. Travis it looks very like sexually charged between the two. It of turns them. me on. Ooh. All right, you guys. That's Wait, all. I saw online that Travis Kelsey calls Taylor Swift, Swift sweetie. And when I woke up this morning, I said, Joe, I want you to call me sweetie. And then when he opened my phone and that was the article 
article I was reading, and I was like, I hope we didn't see that, because that's crazy. <laughs> All right, you guys. Well, thank you for hanging out with us. For some reason, my camera's not telling me how long we've been going, so I have no idea. Oh, my God. Um, I <laughs> hope you enjoyed this episode. All over the place. I'm a new mom. Lizzie's Lizzie. Oh. And Chris is out here doing his best, being great with us. We're so. all dying of red dye 40 poisoning. And we won't visit that again, I guess. I don't know. Lizzie's bullying me. <laughs> is it me or is it the people selling you cancer poison? I don't know. Can they sleep at night, do you think? Yeah, I'm sure they sleep really fucking nicely in beautiful fucking mansions and have billionaire fucking jets and shit, and they don't give a fuck that we're all dying. Well. And I'm sure they own the pharmaceutical companies that we all need to run to for the right. medicines. For the well, medicine I hope that you guys have a wonderful week, and we will see you right back here next Wednesday. We love you very much. Everyone's links are in the description section below. Um, see you later. Goodbye. And, and that's, that's the sip. Ah! That was my impression of Jet. I thought it was your impression of the outro song. Ah! <laughs> now you're bullying my kids. Ah! <laughs> I'm just kidding. She's a mean girl. You're a mean, mean girl. <laughs>